good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I'm back with some more tips on the A10M. Friends, I'm in Kira, and I found some trouble with the settings when you use their default one. So let me show you what I got. All right, so first things first, under Preferences, configure Kira to make things faster, shut off Slice automatically for the time being. I like that on normally, but it is hard when we do this, and I've got a project loaded. Next, under Settings Printer, we're going to add a printer. Choose Non-Networked and scroll down. When you load the A10M, I'm going to put A10M3 because I've been doing this for a while. Uh, when this thing loads, it is crazy. All right, so it should be 230, 230, and 250. <laughs> and then I'm not even going to mess with this because it didn't have the heated bed. And then here's the part that bugs me the most. It's locked on two extruders. You can't change it. So I'm going to just cancel, and then I'm going to remove it because it's garbage. So then what we have to do is we just have to hit Add, and then we're going to go up and do a custom one. And we want an FFF, but I'm going to call this A10M, and I'm going to put Virtual, and it'll be 3. When we hit the Add... It gives us our questions, and this is where we can put in our 220 or 230, 230, and then 250. Do need the heated bed. I'm going to keep all those settings. Notice the 250 automated itself. I'm going to go to five extruders, and I'm going to show you why in just a minute. The other day I did four when I was testing it, and then I got to do shared heater. That is the big one that is important. I'm going to paste in my G-code. I had copied this from my working setup, but I simply had a home, Z to 5, E to 0, move E to positive 1, and then Z back to 0. And then this is where the magic happens. Uh, we set the extruder 0 to 100% and 0. I had the comment above the command, but it got removed by Kira. So I put them after this to see if they stay like they did up on these commands. So I just took care of 100% 0, 0, 100. Notice I called it S1, called it S2, S3, and S4, and then put the correct values, 0 0.75, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.75, 1, 0, 0, 1, so on and so forth. I'm going to delete the generic code and just put in my uh, disable hot end, disable bed, E to 1, E to negative 1, and G28X0Y0. And then make sure you catch this. Uh, they always come in at 2.85, and we need 1.75. Or if you're listening to Vert, he wants a more specific. I don't measure mine. I'm always using cheap generic stuff. 1.75 1.75 for extruder 3 1.75 for extruder 4 and 1.75 for extruder 5 do make sure those stick it's a real weird experience when you print with the wrong ones in there it just does not give you the right results with that done I'm gonna hit next and then let's hit close when I started all this, I had the printer connected, and a lot of these screens were slow because it was slicing and it was always trying to go through the activation. Uh, right now, I don't have it, so it's a little faster. All right, so now that we're in here, let's set our colors. I want number one to be generic PLA white. Just wait for it to catch up. Number two is red. So I've got this printer loaded with white and red. Now, I went in and made all these, and then... This was 75-25, with this being the 75%. This is 25-75, with this being the 75%, and this is 50-50. So this one should be pink. So I'm going to move out here and change it to pink. Generic pink. These, I'm not going to change the colors because they're just a mix-match anyhow. If you wanted to try and make your colors, this is how you do it. Just hit Manage Material. Pick your PLA and hit Duplicate. And then up here, change it to the color that it's going to be. So I'm going to type pinkish. 
because it's going to be more white than pink. And then I'm going to pick the lightest pink that I've got for the actual color I put at it. So then if I wanted, I could go back after closing the materials. And since this one is 75% white, I will make it pinkish. So it just makes them show up a little better. Now I was accidentally on number five, so I'm going to fix that. Generic. That one really is pink. And then this one is pink-ish in my estimation. Now uh, with testing these, I have not found out how it's really going to work yet. So let's go down to the part. This is a simple Tinkercad keychain piece I made. I'm going to make the bottom of this dude out of red. I'm going to make the eyeballs out of white. I'm going to make the smile out of the 50-50 pink. So I've got three colors, one keychain. Let's go over to the settings. I like to print 0.3 extra fast because I'm just learning. I don't want to waste plastic on perfection when I'm just getting everything ironed out. When that loads, I like the 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. I'm going to stay with 20% grids fine. 195 and 60 are numbers I like. I like 60 millimeters per second. Cooling is great. I don't want brim. I want skirt. I always do my skirt uh, four lines, 10 millimeters apart. And then I do want a prime tower. I don't mind it being 20 and 6 for the volume. I do not like where it's located. This corner is too far away from me. So I'm going to just go 200. And I'm going to try 175 and see if I like that. That seems like a location I can work with. It's definitely on the bed. And I'm going to call it good to go and hit slice. Now instead of saved or removable, I'm going to make sure my printer is plugged in and I'm going to choose print via USB. Let's give it a go. Alrighty, so I powered it down just because that fan is noisy as heck. And uh, let's see what we got. This is the brim. This is the actual item. And let's see if we can keep it from popping a mile away. We have got <laughs> definitely good for the red. And then those are kind of hard to tell the difference about. I'll have to look and see which one I had set as what. But this looks more white and this looks more pinkish. But I don't know which way I had it when I'm sitting here. Alrighty, friends. So in the end, that is not quite what I was shooting for. It was supposed to be white up here and it's supposed to be a pink mouth. So I will keep fiddling with it. But at least you know how to set up those virtual extruders and how to get past that crazy configuration that comes for the A10M through Kira. Friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you've got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.